For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the Lost Chapter. Well, welcome back to Dunkin' Donuts, and here we are with Rafe Hollywood Granger. Rafe, what are you enjoying this evening at Dunks? I just um, came came into Dunks. I want to catch up with you guys, get a little coffee, and today I'm a Boston cream donut. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Mm, you look like a Boston cream donut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm still digging the pumpkin muffins. You've got to eat as many of those as you can while they're still... Uh... Cannot abide pumpkin. Oh, wow. And Russ, um, yeah. I can't wait to talk to you about what's everything that's on Steam. That's our... That's our discussion for tonight, right? Is it? I thought it was going to be about um, campaign systems. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't Steam. want to put Craig to sleep. Yeah, Craig will pass uh, out if we talk about all the Steam oh, stuff. Plug, a, lot of, a lot of big game news, though. Somebody Steambox. say Steam? Yeah, no. So I thought we thought it'd be fun. Um, so the idea here is we, we thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about camp. It's kind of like a mulling mechanics that we're sticking in a lost chapter here. But but um, mulling mechanics about different uh, campaign systems for board games. It seems like... I think we talked about the show before a long time ago about a campaign system for miniature war games. Miniature war gamers love their campaign systems. Yep. Um, but board games now, I mean, there are board games that basically simulate campaigns. You think about like large scale board games. But we're talking about now about board games that have each session is a su- is a smaller part of a larger campaign, right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that'd be kind of fun to go through some of the systems and give some examples of what we like and what we don't like and just talk through different ways to do it. Maybe sort of think about. Um, why we like what we like? Well, I right. think I, I I think if I can jump in there, oh yeah, please do. Uh, I think it's a it's a great way for miniature gamers who, for a variety of reasons, can't do a miniature campaign to still get that feeling. You yeah, know, maybe yes. you're maybe you're limited in space, maybe you're limited in a in the group that you have, and not the uh, final frontier space, right? No, no not right. the final frontier space. Uh, that was a setup. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you're foreshadowing gonna, you're gonna have to wait four weeks for the payoff on that one but um but yeah so uh or so RPers i think these too. board ga- what or our peers role players our role players right well i you know I, see again i think role-playing games kind of like i mean they they're by definition they're a campaign so exactly so they yeah. kind of like don't even know i'm come sorry in the same category i was drawing the analogy that you're saying are like, role-playing gamers Yes. Oh, like, okay. Yes, exactly. Right. Role playing fixed. Well, that, what I mean, there's a great example of that, right? If you're a oh, like, yeah. D and D guy or whatever, descent is is your right. You know, is your is your, is your resort if you can't go through all of the f time and effort of yes. Of, uh, yeah. So I think that's why I think this is a great subject right. and, a, and a great topic, and why board games with campaign elements is is a great thing for people either miniature gamers or as Rafe just uh, eloquently put role playing gamers to look at right and so, and oh, I don't make the bullets so Russ I love you but these bullets they crack me up when I read them I just I'm like what is he how does he th- Think of this. It's brilliant. You guys got to see this. It's brilliant. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just I talk. I never would have thought of these categories. I've gone, from, I've gone from different categories for types of campaign systems I and board games, <laughs> going from the most simplistic to the most complex in that order. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, my, in my future <laughs> life, I'm coming back as an engineer. I got to know <laughs> what it's like to think like this. All right. So first of all, um, the most yes. simple structure that's a campaign. Now, now, I'm thinking about when I say campaign, I mean not a single session that is a campaign. I don't mean like playing an Axis and Allies and watching the Allied campaign take over the world. No, that's not really ah, a campaign. Right. No, okay. we're not talking no. about that. We're talking about that we're going to play a board game under its rules, a single game where there's going to be winners and losers, and then we're going to play another session of the same board game that right. is going to somehow be connected to the prior session. Right. Right. All right. right. And several of those until the campaign's over. Right. So the right. most basic... And you've seen this in quite a few board games. We'll talk about some. Here is it is. Linear story based campaign. Yes. What do I mean by that? It's there's a new Russism. Abso- well, there's absolutely no branch. Not really. Not really. There's no branching. So it's going to be a single story that's told, typically in most of these games, it's told through a campaign book that has mission one. Just the team has discovered that something's wrong in the town. They right. must figure out what's going on. Mission two, now that they know there are aliens invading the town, they must find the source of the alien invasion. Mission three, get onto the alien spaceship and take them out. You know, that kind of thing. So it's actually a story. Ooh, I just did a really cool campaign. There you go. Um, 
So there's there's the campaign idea. Each mission, now, the thing that's interesting about this is it's very simple. You get to see a story with your friends. Usually there's some cool progression going on where, um, in terms of of um, complexity in the game, so you start out, they often use these things to be like, here's a simple mission with only a subset of the rules, and here's a more complicated mission. Um, but also, there is no impact from one session to the other. So how well we do in mission one doesn't impact mission two in any way, uh, we could even lose mission one, and the enemies could win. It doesn't matter. We're going to play mission two and see what happens next in the story. Right? Yes. And the, the payout here is that the going through all the missions tells a story. Right. Um, and yep. some great examples of these. Zombie Side is a great example of this. Okay. So in Zombie Side, there's a campaign book with like ten campaign missions. It goes from the survivors trying to scrape together and find some some ideas, all the way through to massive zombie invasion. Um, and yet there's no connectivity between the missions. It's not like if you lose a person in mission one, they're not there in mission two. Um, there's no progression or anything like that right. except for the story. Another good example of this is Battle Or, the original Battle Or. I didn't even think of that. So in the original Battle Or, there's also progression. And now Battle Or does something interesting too where it starts out with very simple rules like the core mechanics, but there's no magic. Yeah. And then as you go, there's like one monster. And I then like there's Battle magic. Or. And then it works its way up to, to more and more of those. Right. Any other examples you guys can think of of the linear story-based campaign? Am I correct in my bullet there of Descent and Level 7? I would say... The, in the non-campaign mode? Because yes. can't you turn off campaign level mode? Seven, level 7 without the official campaign modes would be just that. Des, I don't know if the original Descent had a story. No, it didn't. Uh, it just was a it bunch was of different scenarios. It was just a series scenarios. of missions. Yeah, I don't, okay. think, I don't think it was a story there. Um, so, so you're well, defining it, it as... Be. I don't remember. I can't remember. I can't if remember. there's no story, that doesn't count as a campaign? Yeah, if there's no connectivity between the missions at all, it's just that there's, there's 10 different scenarios in a book. Like, for example, Warhammer 40,000's mission, or, or War Machine's mission system, right? Where you play different missions. There's no campaign, there's no connectivity. There's, there's like six different missions you can play. There's yeah. no connectivity there unless you play the league where there's connectivity, right? Right. So there's, that's that adds it. Right, that adds it, right. Okay. All right. Are any of the new card games, like the new um, War Machine one? No. No. There's no missions there. I mean, there's, there's scenarios, but there's no, there's no story. There's, there's scenarios. scenarios. There's no story, though. Okay. Um, now, another ex- example of this is the new Firefly. There are seven different story cards you can choose from in the new Firefly. And you could even argue that there's a little bit of a story progression there because the most earliest story is like you're getting, you're paying off your ship. And then in a later story, you're building a better crew. But they're not really, they're only very loosely connected. It's really just a bunch of, of yeah, they're not that are, connected. They're yeah. just, they're, 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 there's a progression of difficulty, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, so that's the most basic one. Now, um, I kind of already touched on this a little bit, but I want to expand on this idea of linear story with progression. So this is my next incremental level. Ready? Are you ready for this? The next right. incremental. Oh, man, this is so just mind-bending. We're adding progression to this. So now this is, again, we're still linear. There's no branching. There's only one path you can take on this story. No branching. Um, but later missions are impacted by prior successes. Yeah. Okay? Huh. And um, sometimes your characters will improve. Okay? And the reward here is double the prior category. There's still a story you're learning. There's a very sto- good story usually. Um, but you do need to worry about wins and losses, but also how well you succeed. So you have to determine if you win, but also the degree of success also matters. And in many of these games, there's at least some form of leveling up and progression of your characters as well, right. or of your or of your army or whatever. So you feel like you're getting um, better. There's like a little RPG feel to it. Yep. Right. And this is where, Rafe, I would say Descent and Level 7 fit in. Yeah, so so Mice and Mystics is a great example of this, yeah, right, where board. there's a campaign system. Descent and Level 7 fit in here. Uh, d- descent, not not so much. Oh, I'm going to save Descent for... Because an- yeah? there's branching in oh. Descent. So oh, yes. Ben's Rus- in Rus- my Rus- mind now. Yes. So, he has dialed into this. Craig. But 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 um, I would say Mice and Mystics, Level 7, um, both these games are good examples where there's a, there's a single story to play through. And mm-hmm. how you do in each mission doesn't change the story you're going to be exposed to. But if you do poorly, it'll make the next mission harder. If you do well, it'll get easier for you, right? And your characters are going to change and evolve. And if you play the game twice, your characters might end up different both times you play through. Yeah. See, so, I, I just totally picture Russ. He's sitting in his hybrid. He's eating his K-bar. <laughs> he's already tracked in his calories and his points. And he's like, hmm, I think Descent... No. No, Descent does not fit into linear story based with progression. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it fits here. Right. Well, because if you think about it, okay, so so if you think about the level of complexity the game designer must put in to get branching into the game, it's a whole lot more work. 
Like, so, so let's talk about that. So, so these are kind of easy. The only thing you got to do, oh, another good example of this is, um, is, um, the, um, I'm going to try to say, a Wrath of a Shardalon and the Dritz games, the, the D&D ones, they all have simple progression from mission to mission, and it's a big straight story, though. But there is some simple campaign progression in there. In your so character sorry. levels. In your character yeah. does level, yeah. Very minimally, though. You get better equipment. It's kind of like level 7. You just get better equipment as you go. Um, now, so those are those. But it gets very complicated as soon as you try to put in branching. So what do I mean by branching? I mean by branching is, in video games, talk about this all the time, the idea that it's a linear story like Halo, right, where you're on rails. I mean, you're not on rails. You can walk around, but there's really only one main story to follow, right? Yeah. A branching story is kind of like a game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption where you can go different, or Skyrim, you can go do different things, and their path to success may be different. If Rafe plays the game and I play the game, we might do different things to get to the end of the game and not, never even see other things the other person could have done. And so branching missions are like that. So if you think about how Descent works, which is probably one of the few examples, there's not a lot of board games that have, that have branching in them, that do it really well. And I think this is one of the reasons that so many of us like Descent, even though it's arguable the rules are still, you know, are still kind of rough. It gives you the feeling that it's this very open kind of worldy thing because what happens in Descent is not only do my characters progress and not only does the success of each mission matter because now I'm going to get better. Not only does my character level up, but there might be key elements the overlord's going to get for his lieutenants or you're going to get for your characters or it's going to change other future missions. But also... The next mission you get to choose is going to be based on how well you do, and other mission options will go away depending on whether the Overlord wins or the players win. So you've got a very branching thing, and we can play the same campaign twice, and some missions will never get played, mm. right, if you don't branch yep. that direction. Right, right, yep. So that's the idea of branching. Can you guys think of any other branching games besides Descent? Dude, I don't think I could have thought of it on well, its own. think of a campaign system in a board game that can branch. I can't think of any other ones, actually. Campaign? Like where you can choose which just mission to go on next. Nah, I can't. I can't either. Nothing. Yeah, no. nothing. Me either. What do you guys think? So of the three so far, which do you like the most? You got your linear one, you got your linear one with leveling up, and then you've got your branching. Uh, I know I, my vote. I, what, what's your vote? Uh, linear with branching up. No, no, I'm sorry. Line, linear with leveling up. All right, so the middle one, not so much branching. You don't care about nah, that. No, I, I don't care about branching. I, I think the branching allows for that full role-playing game feel that I I really enjoyed. I I, ne- I didn't finish Descent, Sea of Blood. Uh, we didn't play to the end. Mm-hmm. Not everybody who was playing was really enjoying the Descent rules. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed the, the the idea that there was like a giant sandbox and you could go anywhere you wanted. And yeah. it really, re- that, that element of a camp, that, that to me is what really makes a campaign fun. So I like progressions and I like stories and I like linked games, but I really like just feeling like you've got a world that you can explore. And, and that's, and that's something that changed drastically between descent one and descent two. Yeah. In descent one, there's a map, right? right. There's a sideboard yeah. map and where you go on that map dictates where you actually fight. And you have this feeling that there's this map you travel around, and it feels like right. you're in an RPG traveling the world. Oh, so you lost that in Descent 2? In Descent 2, the map is totally abstracted and not really there. Oh. In Descent 2, what there is, is there is a... In fact, it's even more so now. So in the, in the first in the campaign that comes natively with the game, there's a little card, and it tells you that if you win... You, there's a, there is a map on the back of the box... But all that map really means is that you're gonna you always start in the city, and you say I'm gonna go to mission one. Well, it shows you which dotted line you gotta walk to mission one, and that tells you which kind of card you flip over to see what kind of problems are on the, on the road. Then when you're done with that, you go back to your city, same place, and then you go to another mission. That but the mission you choose is based on the missions available based on how you did in the first mission. Mm-hmm. In the new the newest campaign that just came out. They do have the map still, but basically it's just a tree structure on a card. You say, okay, if you win this mission, then you can right. choose between these two. And then with these two missions, you can win it, you can choose. So it's very much just a branching tree, like a flow chart, uh-huh. um, which like is that. fine, but you don't, you, there is a map, but fun. you don't really feel like you're on a map, right? right. So, so that's very much, they've kind of lost that a little bit. I think that's also why some people who really like Descent, one, despite right. some yeah. of the fiddly rules, you know, they like that. In yep. Descent 2, it's much cleaner, much easier to play. I really love it. We're having a blast. We've already completed the campaign once, so we started another one. Um, huh. But um, I can see why people don't 
because the, the the vision of the oh I'm on a world traveling the world anywhere I can go is is, is lost there. Right now, so would you still say Descent One? was uh branching linear with progression yes descent one with or blp with one of the campaigns yes with one right. of the campaign packs so descent yeah. one with the descent one core box no right those were all single session right. games but yeah, descent bump with the campaigns either sea of blood or road to legend yeah um yes yeah mm. um yeah they're both branching it's just because really the map the map just let you branch in a way uh, because where you went on the map, what the Overlord did could shut down certain missions. Because once you picked one place, other places would close down, things like that. Right, so it was all. Yeah. What you did changed the world, which is cool too. Right. Well, that, that, yeah. So, so it sounds to me, yeah. I've made a discovery during this segment <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that I don't want to play Descent 2 campaign. Yes. But in fact, later I have one. And in fact, you might be right, Craig. I may, because I have another level to this, Rafe, you're going to love this, Uh-oh. where now I have map based campaigns. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So. Your map-based campaign is basically a game where there's a map that dictates how you're going to fight. Now, yeah. I would argue Descent 1's with the campaigns is really a map-based campaign, and Descent 2 is really this branching thing I kind of oh, yes. presented. Mm. But, wow. but the map-based campaign stuff, you really start to see with miniature war gamers. Now, now like, see, Rafe, now Russ has sucked himself down the rabbit hole. I, I yes. have. I'm not, exactly. Now I've made it all way too complicated. But, but basically, so your map-based campaign, um, these I really think are the ultimate way to play a miniature war game. I really like them. You you get a map. You mark where your armies are. You move them around. You have your force dispositions. You you actually say this particular pin on the map is... I mean, you can get really granular with this stuff. Um, It is the best way to play that that stuff. The only problem with it is that you get locked in. Like So if if Craig, Rafe, and I, and and Randy, and Christian are all playing this map-based campaign, and I want to advance to this territory to my right... Well, the, and it's, you know, it's the best place for me to move, and that's where Christian's living. I'm going to fight Christian now. If Christian can't make it to the game store this week, right? Yeah, I now have a problem because I yeah. we got delayed yeah. the whole campaign until Christian and I fight. So there's that problem. Fight me. Uh, but I really like. I don't know. What do you guys feel about map based campaigns? I I love map based campaigns, and I think if I had a if I had a choice, I think that's that's pretty much the. I love map. I love campaigns where everything, all that other stuff is happening. Mm-hmm. But the one element to me that ties it together in a really cool way and makes it real for me is the map. Like I mean, when when we did that dust thing, Russ, that was a map mm-hmm. campaign that we managed to do in one night. Yes, but it had a map and it had progression. It, it was, I mean, that was cool. What, yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, so I would say, and I, I worked like, you know, that, that was like three weeks worth of work for one night of gaming because that, that was one of those moments where you realize if I want it to happen, I'm going to have to do it on my own. So I might as well just go ahead and buckle down and do it. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would say, and, and that that's vote. probably why I really loved the, uh, the whole concept of Descent 1. And I'm 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 a little disillusioned about the whole descent too. Well, you should play it. I think you still get the feel of it, but it is definitely less mappy. Yeah, um, I don't like um, map based campaigns unless they're X cam. Well, there's so, no map in X cam. All right, let's no. talk about that. No, there is, but there's ways. I thought, unless my memory's foggy again, I thought there were ways to make it that if the one person doesn't show up, it doesn't screw up the whole campaign. Well. So, right. So, so, uh, yeah. So, map based campaigns require a map. Now, the you're on, the X cam that Craig and I came up with. There's no map in X cam. Right. X, the expansion campaign system does two things, and this is a separate uh, sort of thing. It's a I hybrid. Think. Yeah. Well, so really, the other way you can play a campaign uh, or, or a game is is an is an what I would call an abstract ramp up. Right. <laughs> All right. So in this campaign, what you do each mission, um, well, it does sort of affect the future, but the real goal of the campaign here is there's not really a story necessarily, um, but missions get more complex over time, and your forces, the types of forces available to you get more complex over time. Right. So that you feel like in the beginning, it's some kind of huge campaign or war, but it's sort of skirmishes. And then as you go on, your forces grow and the battle become more complex. And by the end, you have epic saga struggles that are maybe taking you four hours. But it's awesome because every model you own or every, every bit of every complexity in the game is on the table. But in the beginning, you just have small guys and you're fighting, right? 
Yeah. And that's sort of the idea. And this is great for miniature gamers, especially to try to get new players into the game because you're starting out the league or the campaign with small forces. And then you slowly add to your army as you go and kind of get it, it kind of get you to build up and paint models as you go. But it's also great for board games. And we took the X game and applied it to Battle Lore and. Um, you could apply apply it to X Wing. Um, you know, any 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 game that's got you know army building in it could yeah. easily use it. Um, in addition to uh, true miniature war games, so I really like this system. But the downside to this one, unlike every other system we've described so far, there is really very little story in these right. kind of systems, un- unless. Unless you really work hard to build it in somehow, yeah, there was always story in my head. Yeah, well, hopefully they, yeah, hopefully they encourage you to think about a story, but there isn't really. It's not like in level seven where I'm like, Craig, read the fluff this week. You know, there's a right. story to actually read, um, or in a map based campaign where last week I was in, you know, in in Europe, and this week I'm over in in Russia. You know, it, it's 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 different. It's it's you know, it's it's just this very abstracted sort of thing where I did two two scouting missions, and now I'm going to do a major event. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. So I I do like that a lot though. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to play it, and I like it for both miniature and board game. I like the way that it ramps up. Other than our homebrew X Cam system, though, can you guys think of any examples of this that work like this? Uh, I can think of the expansion campaigns that GW and Privateer Press do, where you start a league small and work your way up. Right. Yeah. And that's that. And then those are actually fairly common. Yeah, I think uh, in in miniatures games. Yeah, I can only but, think of miniature. I, but I that's think. not a camp. That's almost always a league. It's almost an. Ex- yeah. It's always an expansion league. Yeah, right, you're right. So there's no story. There's no story. It's just that the lists get bigger. Yep. Uh, as you progress, um, where would you put like Necromunda and Mordheim? That's not really this because that's that's actually there's no map. But that's um, true. There's a campaign system there though, isn't there? There's like a. Yeah. Those are interconnected. That would be a well. There's no story though in those, is there? Uh, no, not, it's no. just a series of missions that, but your guys level up and, uh, so yeah. what would, what would that be? I don't think I have a category for that. Uh Oh, Rafe, no, we no. found it. There's no story based. We found the chink. No, you got a new, no, you got a new category. That's awesome. See, this is science. We have new discovery. We have to bring it into our model <laughs> of the world. New discovery. So we have to call, what would we call that? We need a title for this category. See, we're doing science right here live on the air. That's what's happening right now. Science. Science. So this would be, um, Progression, right? Mm-hmm. With no story. <laughs> this so- sounds sort of like a poor man's campaign. Well, you know, it's in science, all you got to do to make that sound like science is write it in Latin. Oh, there so, you Craig, go. So, Craig, what is progression in Latin? Oh. You know, I thought you were the English teacher. Rafe, you're, yeah, did law, does the law study Latin? Yes. Do I need to call a pharmacist now? Who knows, who knows Latin? It is race ipsa loquitur. <laughs> is it really? Are you making no. that up? Yes. It is Latin. Yeah. But that is that, that is right. Latin. So, uh, e pluribus unum is yes. actually what someone, I think. Someone Google looking. progression. Uh huh. All right, I'm uh, going to do that. Talk amongst yourselves. No, I got it. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, progressionis. Progressionis. Yeah, that's not very sans storius. <laughs> right. right. Wait. Wait. Anyway. Okay. So this is the so that new category basically we're talking about now is like a necromunda. That's right? an abstract ramp up. Sine fabula progressionis. I guess it's an abstract ramp up, isn't it? It really is, sort of. But I was thinking with the ramp up was more, um, more you're getting more complicated. I guess it is. I guess this really goes to the abstract ramp up category, isn't it? Necromunda and upcoming um, sprawl ganger sounds like it's going to work that way, right? Um, so games where there's a progression, but there's no story at all, right? In the campaign, um, that's right. cool. I like that. Was a good one. Good catch. Um, what else? What other ones fall into this category? Sine fabula progressionis. Yeah, it's like, like sine fabula progressionis. Nice. That sounds nice. really scientific. That's a scientific name for a progression with no story. There we go. There you go. Awesome. Nice. See, we need Latin for all these, Craig. We need to make That's that up. True. Oh yeah, I'll get right. Okay, on that. get on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see. A, I see a thesis document for you here. Ah, you there you go. The, I already did one. Uh, did I have another one? I, I wonder if the under abstract ramp up, if the flames of war. Campaigns are casino and tank aces follow. Yeah, how do those a work? Map, but it really is just illustrative. Like you're not. It's just for fun. It's almost like you can picture your guys moving up through your tanks going through. But what happens is you play mission one, and then depending on the results, it affects your. You, you get your leaders level up. You know your tanks get better abilities. You can get tank hunter abilities, stuff like yep. that. 
That's but cool. But there's no story except so, for history. So that does sound like maybe it's an abstract. Do you ramp up? Do you guys get more? Do you get more yep. dudes as you go? Yep. Okay. Not necessarily more dudes. It depends. It can be more dudes. It can be weather effects. It can be it, your leaders level up. Okay. Mm. That sounds pretty cool. Yep. It's, it is cool, actually. I can't think of any board games that do this kind of stuff. Um, no. Where the where they progress, like I mean, Battle Lore has it sort of where you follow the story and it does it does ch- you add more things to your hopper, but that's not really the same thing. Yeah, more things to your to your quiver of options, I guess. The uh, the D and D ones aren't this way. The D and D ones are are um they're like my Mystics in level seven. They're 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 oh Craig got the thing. Those are linear story based with progression or Craig, how do you pronounce that? Uh, linear story based with progression would be fundatar in historia progressiona. Yes, the scientific term for that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, we got this. And Craig, did you get branching story with progression? Uh, I do. Uh, uh, ad ramosi progressionis. Yes. Yeah. See, science right here, folks. If it's if you got Happening Latin, now. it is definitely it's science. Awesome. Yeah. If it can be the way you name species of animals, it can be the way we categorize That's types right. of right. board game campaign God. systems. So yeah. we we also need the linear story based, Craig, and then we got the whole set. Now. While Craig is doing that, Rafe, is there a category we've missed? Have, have I got it all? Have I fit every single campaign type into a bucket here? <laughs> For board game, you know, focusing mainly on board games? Yeah, we, I can't think you've missed Well, we even reached a little bit into miniature games, too. I mean, we got the map base, which is miniatures. We got the yep. board game, too, a little bit. We got the um, abstract ramp up, which is what we discovered was, uh, you know, we X camp system, which you for like every miniature game ever made. And we also have it for. We got candles, Necromunda, and sprawl yep. gangers and stuff. What about um, progression with no story? We got those. Those are, those are easy. So, what yeah. about um, anything else, Rafe? No, but I'm wondering. Um, do you think did, did any of these um, exist prior to 1980? Like, I'm trying to think the back those Avalon Hill games. Those would be historically campaign based. Because I'm wondering, I'm wondering with the plethora of board games, if designers out there realize like yeah it's hard to get a role-playing group together now so let's create a cool dungeon crawl where our guys level up but it's not role-playing like i wonder why or how they evolved sounds to me like that's a whole another segment yes the evolution mm-hmm. of a historical segment so that you you need to get on that rafe yes yep. we'll do so craig what's what's linear no branching what is that uh linear no branching would be linear abus nulo progressio all right yeah so, so, so there you have it. That is our our categories of board games. Did, Craig, did I miss any now? Now that Craig no, said, that I can about... think. I, well, I was thinking about what Rafe just said, and I think back. Like, if you go back then, I think you were actually looking at a lot more historical gamers were the only ones really doing anything like this. Right. So you'd probably be looking more along the lines of uh, linear story based with progression based upon the history. Right, right, exactly. You know, like, right. so if you win this mission, then you go through the other side, and you get like we used, excuse me, like we used to do with um, with oh. Flames of War. You know what we're missing like from that this? Really list? cool. What What are we missing? You, you just made me think of this attrition. None that's of, what I was thinking. Yeah. About. So none of the. That's what I think we were. But, heading, I, right? I, but I, I I lumped that in with progression, meaning the story is progressing, yeah. not necessarily your force. Yeah, because your force. Because we we talked about progression, like you're adding more complexity or you're getting more gear, but. There's the attrition situation too, which I guess is in level seven. Also, if you go down, you lose your gear. But but there's I'm thinking of miniature war games where actually we had some campaigns right where if you lost bad enough, you'd have a point deficit next game or something. Right. right? Or if you look at Necromunda, you could lose your most powerful guy dead like that, and the next thing you right. know, you're like a hundred yeah. points down in the next mm. game. So I guess you're right. I guess many of these categories have that. And I remember we played that one Flames of War campaign at Empire Games, which is really pretty involved and really actually very cool. It was very good. Um, where you could actually lose a division and all of a sudden you'd lose... Because speci- we, we said, like, this flag has these guys on it. Yeah, and if yeah, in that yep. game certain elements of that flag were destroyed, they just were gone. So if you lost that tank platoon, it was gone, which is cool. And you had to repair it or get reinforcements. It was That was a really neat, um, you know, tough to run, so kudos to those who did it and, and hard to manage, but it was slick when it all came together. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was neat. But, um, like, most, like, like... I mean, most of these like that require one or more people who are going to step up and, you know. Yeah, and that's the thing. Whereas the board games do it for you. I like that. Right. And, and that's, I think that's the reason I do like the um, the four X board games so much who, who don't fall in this category at all because as I defined this in the beginning, we weren't talking about games who, which were a campaign in and of themselves. But I think yeah. that's why I like games like Rune Wars and stuff where, where you're actually sort of, the board game is a campaign, right? You're sort of, 
doing the entire war campaign thing where you're on a map and you're moving your guys and you're and you're uh, exploring and finding new things and, and you're getting you're getting more more resources to recruit more guys and that whole thing and it's attrition because if you lose that force and that one hex then now you've lost that army and you got to build a new one and so I, that that feeling you get you kind of get that now in a lot of board games what? in and of themselves what where is um where would you put the war machine type of uh this is miniatures but mm-hmm. it's you know it's kind of like you can be like all right Rafe what region do you pick oh if you pick that your winter guard troopers get plus one movement. so that's interesting so so that is that's more of a league i think a league than a campaign because there are they what they put into there which i think is pretty clever is they have a system where when we go to play a game in the league right we pick the place we're going to fight in and that dictates maybe the kind of mission we're going to fight, and it dictates maybe some special rules. But when when you and I play the following week, the results of the prior game have no impact on that. Right. Right? So that's, that's why right. I feel like it's not a campaign. It's a league. Right. Where, and your leaders don't level up. Right. There's no progression. There's no progression really of any kind. I think... Or of stories. So I think one common thing we have, which is an interesting analysis in all of our categories here, is there's some kind of progression, at least in narrative. There's either a narrative progression with story-based ones that have nothing else, or there's some kind of actually progression in your force and perhaps a progression in story. In a league, which is not a campaign, maybe the, and that's a good question, what is the difference between a league and a campaign? In a league, there's no progression either narratively or in your force uh, from week to week except that there's some core mechanic that says this week we're now playing with larger forces. But there's no, like, the results or anything from the prior game impact that. Does that make sense? Right. Yep. I think so. Yeah, it's almost like the League ones want to add the coolness of a campaign, which is having your guys do something just a little bit different for mm-hmm. some reason, and they'll make it tied to a map, but really you just could roll a D20 and go, you guys have this. Well, they're trying to progress. There is a, what's, what's cool about how Privateer does it is there is a story. Um, because if you look at the league they did where they were revealing the convergence, they, they had a thing where if enough people do certain things in the league, we'll reveal more of the story. And there's a story each week and they reveal it on their website. So there is this story, but it's not your personal story. It's like the story of the world that your battles are helping influence. Right. So it's kind of, so it's kind of still a league in my mind, but, and they're also doing that maybe to emulate some of that map stuff like you're saying, right? But I think also they're doing it just to keep a lot of variety, tactical variety in the game. So, like, it's not just another game of War Game Machine. It's like, oh, this week, you know, we've got special units to choose from. Like, for each league, they come up with those cards that are different for each faction. But then, now that I'm thinking about it, won't they also do that thing where you can log into the website and then, depending on how many people logged in their Kador victories, they'll be like, ooh, Kador has taken over the map. Over yeah, here. right. So, exactly. So, it does progress, but... It, not personally, like it, it's sort right. of interesting, but it, it is it is sort of a campaign. You're right; it's it's on the edge. Yeah, it is on the edge because there's that whole campaign. Did we just discover on. another species? I think we might have. Or does this fit in there somewhere? I think that is a new species. I think that would be a league campaign hybrid. <laughs> league campaign hybrid. It's Craig, like a mule. What's, what's Latin for that, Craig? Mm. League, a, a league campaign, campaign hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah, we'll call that Privateer Press. <laughs> and GW does that too, because GW, GW did the same thing with the Armageddon campaigns and stuff back in the day. Uh, right? Apparently, the uh, La- the Romans had nothing for uh, hybrid. Well, Foetus militia hybrid. They weren't really um, eco friendly. Those Romans. No, no, they weren't. They're building roads they, everywhere. That's right. You know, changing the train with aqueducts. You know, changing the <laughs> ecosystem. It was changing just, the terrain. You know, you know yeah. it, was, it was tough. Um, all right. So what was it? What was the Latin for that then, Craig? Well, using the word hybrid for hybrid. Hybrid's probably uh, yes. Latin for something else, actually, isn't it? A hybrid? No, when I think a hybrid, uh, no. I, th- I believe a hybrid is probably a portmanteau. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Foetus militia hybrid. That's that's what all we right. got for how that. How do you spell that? Spell it? How, how do you spell that, Wilson? Uh, <laughs> uh, where do you want me to put it? I put it in the, the very second bullet there, Ali. <laughs> this is great radio now. <laughs> hey, we got to have go. our science well documented. There it is. Why, nice. in the, why, in the, why on God's green earth are you even making me do this? <laughs> I don't know. What, I feel what like. Is, what is, who what, is ever going to I see feel, this? I feel like I need to publish this on, on our, on our web page <laughs> as, as categories. Yeah. You know what would be fun to do? Get on like, well, the game list doesn't really have it, but I have like campaign systems. The D6G campaign system scientific the, the, not, what, what is that called terminology no yeah what? i don't know what that is 
Oh yeah, the official, the scientific name, the scientific classification, right? Just like species, yeah, right? It's a scientific yeah. classification, uh-huh. scientific campaign classification campaign of campaign types. There you have it. Yeah. All right. Is that? Is there anything else? We got it all now here nailed down. I, I think, think we got it. Pretty now. much done it. Wait, wait, wait. Craig's got something else. Riveting radio, Craig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're talking uh, taxonomia belli gerandi rationes. What is that? That's scientific classification of campaign types. Right. There we go. And oh there you have gosh. it, folks. Yeah. There you go. Um, now, uh, so, Craig, Rafe, thanks so for joining us. If we us. were really professionals, we would have done all this ahead of time. Right. No. See, the scientific discovery live on the air. That's what you just right. participated in, everyone. It's like Bill Nye, the science guy. It is. So, Rafe, thanks for joining us in Lost Chapter. We look forward to having you on the main show in about a week. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. Awesome. See you then. See you then. Later. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow. Thank you.